Chevrolet Sports Fire is brought to you by your local Chicagoland Chevrolet Geo dealers. The Chicago Sun Times, where you get sports with an attitude. And the Luke WLUP AM 1000. Number 45. Call in hitmen don't know what they mean. A reminder of the Super Bowl shuffle. How you doing, everybody? I'm Seth Scott. Welcome once again to Chevrolet Sports Fire, right here on Sports Channel, joined today by Yaley, who made good, former Chicago Bear. Now, a prominent broadcaster, business man, our buddy, Gary Fentick, along with Brian Hewitt, senior football writer, sports with an attitude to Chicago Sun Times. I thought you were going to talk about Mike Pyle. So, so much for the building. Uh, <laughs> now, let's get down to what matters. Uh, Michael Keller Dixon, I believe you've heard of him. Uh, why is it with football coaches, uh, Mike Ditka or for that reason Bob Knight, or really any coach who wins uh, either 11 games or gets a contract in the world, that once a coach has become quote-unquote established, a coach then becomes also a philosopher, an historian, a social observer. Do we, as members of the media, make them that way or give them license? I, I think Mike Ditka definitely was given license, and he's so used to manipulating the press that uh, I think he's a little offended uh, that they might become critical as they did a few weeks ago. I mean, that, that's my view of it, but, uh, you, know, you know, he's got the books, and he's got this and that and everything else, and I think this town was so hungry for a winner that uh, once he got the podium, no one wanted to take it away from him, nor could they. It, it had nobody or nobody wanted to. No one wanted to. I mean, look at the guy who came before him. Uh, what, that podium put you to sleep. You know, uh, I, I got to say something. Uh, I think we'll appreciate Mike Dixon when he's gone. I don't know if more than when he's here, but especially with the Harbaugh incident, yelling and screaming at him, you, know, you could have Emily Moorhead saying, "Well, what about the time he grabbed my face mask yeah. uh, during a game on Monday night?" But I think when you remember what he was replacing. Even the players and certainly the fans and the media wondered whether or not Neil Armstrong really cared. And now Mike, you know, he was yelling on the sideline, he'd be very boisterous, and they'd say, yeah, okay, one way or another, at least we have a coach who really demonstrates every day that he cares. Is Mike Ditka, in the opinion of Gary Fentzik, a happy man right now? Does he enjoy doing what he's doing, or has football become an albatross that he has to deal with until, bang, it's over, and he can concentrate on golf? Jen Rummy and other avocations. Chet, I think he uh, still loves coaching. I think he loves the challenge and the motivation of uh, trying to develop a, a winning product on a yearly basis. So I, I don't think that is an issue at all. But, but, I, but, I, but I, I think I have to agree with you, though. I think that he's not a real happy guy. But I, I have no idea why that is, but it certainly isn't the, the lack of being challenged on the football field. I think he's seen a downhill slide ever since Jerry Benicio left that ball club. As you know, Jerry Benicio is Mike Dixon's buckle. Mike had the bad day. He could go back to Jerry, kind of stop on the rocks, relax, shoot the breeze. Jerry was a great tranquilizer for Mike Dixon. And I think to this day, Mike misses the presence of Jerry Benicio. And as a result, I think when the demon now emerges Mike Dixon, they're self-contained. There's no release pressure. Well, don't you think he's put Venisi behind him, though? I mean, that happened. I don't think so. I really don't think so. And so it's worse now than it was yeah. when it happened? Well, well, I don't know that it's, it's worse, but if you follow that point a little bit, who does he have to really buffer within the organization? I don't know that he's particularly close to Mike McCaskey or Bill Tobin, and those would be the two people uh, that you would be close to in that you know, tight, small organization. Um, but I, I think that there's probably a combination of things that are uh, maybe taking a little bit of the fun out of for Mike because he, he just seems not to be enjoying himself. And I could be misreading it, but I think we all pick up on it that uh, he doesn't seem to enjoy things as much. And, and, and to me, it, that almost shows up the way he's treating the press right now. I mean, you know, he's like above this stuff. He doesn't, he used to play around with him like a, a cat with a mouse. And now, it's, you know, he's letting somebody get under his skin like that. Well, for example, you know, talking about the press, uh, he calls the press a bunch of SOBs. Um, Truth hurts, I'm not, yeah, obviously <laughs> uh, I'm not going to uh, deify myself, but I was campaigning for Mike Ditka to, uh, to give an induction to the Hall of Fame back in 1980. I thought it was a great idea part of George Allen to bring Mike Ditka to Chicago. I've always been in Mike Ditka's time, but Mike Ditka was collectively referred to the press as a bunch of us that do, in my opinion, is choose one, either neurotic or childish, or, or, or both. Or just a, uh, a careless, emotional reaction that he didn't really mean. Well, I think he meant it. You know, we're, we're the sun times that at least is the sports of an attitude. 
attitude and if somebody calls us uh, sons of bitches, I mean, it's a compliment of the highest order. I mean, we <laughs> <laughs> must have a lot of buttons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was kidding uh, uh, Phil Theobald, the, uh, the guy who walked out on him, because uh, he said, you know, he said, Mike, I've respected you, and uh, nobody's ever called me that before. And I said to Phil, I said, you know, Phil, I, I, uh, I think that was neat that you walked out and you, you showed some stones, but I said, don't tell me that nobody's ever called you a son of a bitch before. You're from Peoria. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody needed to replace Red Mutton, you know, I guess that was it, you know, talk maybe about we a did. Poorly chosen whipping boy. Uh, uh, yeah. see, see, I think, though, that Ditka, that you talk about what's making him unhappy now. I think that he looks at the team, it's clearly a team that, that, for a lot of reasons, is going this way right now. They're going down. You're not going this way. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and the rules are about to change. Uh, free agent, the light at the end of the tunnel uh, is, is, is the freight train that's going to be free agency. And, uh, uh, and the draft it may not even, as, as early as 93, when we see drastic train changes in the draft. So the rules by which the Bears, as well as any other team in the league, have played and have gotten, have gotten rich uh, are about to change. And, and uh, the Dick is going to have to adjust to a and all of that. But they will. They will adjust. And, uh, well, how, are we going to start spending money, Gary? I, I think that uh, you can't say that they won't spend money. And they, they've always talked about spending money wisely. And I think that uh, once these rules do change, and I, I certainly hope that free agency or the right to work uh, happens in the NFL sooner rather than later, uh, then we'll find out whether or not the Bears are willing to spend money. If they're not, uh, maybe they'll consider selling the team. Well, I think we already know that I'm spending money. Uh, now I'm, I'm getting you in a position where you're going to spend Michael McCaffrey. Just where, you be, already, yeah. just where you want to be. But I mean, Jay Hildenberg, did they spend money wisely there? Uh, Wilbur Marshall, how, how wisely did they spend the money there? Uh, I think they've got a proven track record, yeah. at least at the highest level of the uh, corporate structure in Lake Forest. No. I don't think they're spending Even money. Even when thinks of the president of the Bears, you want to put people into a pecking order. And uh, I talked to Jay when he was holding out. I said, Jay, the moment you are asking for more money than a quarterback's making, you're barking up the wrong tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they got caught in the situation with Jay. Well, one, they had a certain day at a center who was old. And uh, you know, I think some other publications have pointed out that he is not held in the highest esteem uh, throughout the NFL. And even though you make all pros so many different times, you want to be fair. And he wasn't going to get more than a quarterback was making. Uh, and take a look at who's playing. Jerry, I don't know, I haven't heard anyone say that this guy is just embarrassing the offensive line. So I, I think there are instances, and when Harbaugh's next contract up, we can be asking for quite a bit. But they do deal for money. I'm not trying to explain to Jerry. I, I, I have my battles with him, I know. Uh, but I, I do think that they are very cognizant of the fact that it's free agency when it happens. For president. Broccoli. Yeah, I love broccoli. Do you ever cry? No. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. When you do commercials, does anything end up on the cutting room floor? <laughs> Don't do that. That won't make commercials. Do you have a basketball net in your driveway? Nope. Got place in my driveway. <laughs> Chicago Sun-Times is more than just a big city newspaper. It's also your hometown paper. We give you all the national and international news, sports, business, and entertainment. But we tell you how it affects Chicago. That's what we do best. We're Chicago's number one selling newspaper. And we know how important Chicago is to you. We the Chicago Sun-Times. A picture can say a thousand words. Now with Zenith Color Television, it truly does. Zenith is the first TV ever to combine state-of-the-art technology with a choice of closed captioning as an aid to entertainment and learning. For true innovation,
station and television. Ask to see a thing. that or is that Anderson reflecting uh, frustration over the fact that they're they have had a one or the other going to uh he went to the uh the box with my kitchen. Yeah, Chad, I, I was really surprised to hear that. I mean how many players a year in advance say that I'm only gonna play two more years? I never believe it because I don't think any player really knows until you start getting down that line. I talked to Mike Singletary a few years ago. He said why did you make the decision? Uh, when I did I said you know it. You know it. You know when you can't do things, you're draining me all the time, you're hurting all the time. Uh, for me, the strike was the final straw in 1987. I came out of that, I said, I'm out of here. I just, I'm not enjoying myself. I fulfilled every, everything I, and more than I ever thought I could do. And for Neil, I think it's so premature to put any timeline uh, when you're in the prime of your career. But I, I have to wonder if I'm some of his teammates, you gotta say, well, if this guy has his agenda, why aren't they playing somebody else who's going to be around more than just this year and next year? Mm -hmm. And maybe they will pretty soon. You know, it's interesting that you say you knew it. We had Earl Campbell on the show, Chad, a few weeks yeah. ago, and, and he, he walked right away from it. Uh, uh, and amazingly, kind of clean and cleanly and quickly. But I think there are a lot of guys oh, who, who don't. I mean, there, there's a handful of people who do. Right. Uh, because one, the money's gotten so big, um, and two, this is something you love doing. I mean, people, you can't do this for money. I mean, it, it, it can, you know, you want to make the money and you know it's an important part, but you can't be going out there every Sunday getting the hell beat out of you, going through practices and the meetings and everything else. I mean, it's a, it's tough. And uh, you get into December here and you're hurt here. I mean, I look at Dan Horn. I thought, how do you do it? I mean, the guy, he gets up and tells, I mean, I don't even know how he's walking at this point. <laughs> but for example, a guy like uh, Jim Colbert, Chosen uh, member of the National Football League's 1980s team of the decade. We'll tell you point blank that for a long time, in the morning, just to get to practice, his wife Penny would have to help the 280-pound man get out of bed. His back was that bad, and yet he kept down playing. Hey Chad, I, I, I mean everybody does it. Yeah, I, I remember watching a semi-tough one of those football movies where Nick Nolte gets out and he grabs like a couple of ass and drinks a half spent beer. And I'll tell you, huh. <laughs> and that's just to get to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, I used to, I sleep on my stomach a lot, and uh, it would get into the season where you couldn't even get your shoulders up like that. You'd, just, you'd almost be in a fetal position, and you'd, you'd get up in the morning, you're, you're, you're kind of beat up, you're rolling, you're, oh, I can't roll that way. You roll the other way, and all of a sudden it's like it's step by step, inch by inch, just to get going and, and uh, you know, just make sure that everything's working. I buy the food. I have long drive the food. Forget about money. Ultimately, it's a game of passion. You do. Now, I just tell me how much you relish and how much Frank relish the reputation of being an assassin. Hey, I put all with me. A guy who, a guy who rang Jimmy Giles' bell so badly in Soldier Field one night that you thought Giles' was head was in Lake Michigan and the rest of his body was in downtown neighbors. And that changed the way Jimmy Giles ever played. And uh, I remember Doug Williams was a quarterback back then for Tampa, ran all the oh. way down the field, yelling the at the ref. Yelling, yeah, couldn't believe he was going to get flagged. Why? Because the ball had bounced off the stick before Doug hit Come on, you know, detail, detail. I was telling some of the younger guys that my first couple of years, uh, you know, there was no bump rule. That, that bump rule, you, you'd hit a guy, a guy who's completely out of the play, be coming across from the post side and the side. Yeah, just get up to the in defense of that, had free reign to lower the boom. How about Willie Galt? <laughs> well, Willie Galt, <laughs> Willie Galt would have wound up a ballet dancer. Yeah, he would have made the right to do Willie Galt. Doug, 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 Doug Williams, he was supposed to be the guy that they wanted to send to Iran during the uh, hostage crisis because he was the only guy who could overthrow the Ayatollah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, on Plank, though, uh, before we get away from him, we, did, did you ever feel you guys were sort of lumped together in a lot of ways? Uh, and yet you're very different. Um, did, you, did, you, did guys ever come after you thinking uh, thinking they were going after him playing, but they couldn't tell a difference? I'm telling you a story. Doug retired, and uh, the next year, a guy came up to me in a rap. 
<laughs> Doug is gone. He's gone, you know. But and it's true story. I, yeah. I went back to college with my dad. We were tied together, and and it was a lot of fun because when he was a free safety and I was playing strong. And he, I knew what he was going to do. I mean, I felt him, and I knew that if a running back had a move to go in or out, and Doug was in, I'd always lean to the outside, knowing that if I missed it, the guy had a worse fate. He was going to run into plank, and he was he was a serious. He was close to it. We used to be in a, I'm, I'm not kidding you, we used to be, you make the tackle, you wouldn't lift your head up until you heard the fly open, because Doug would be coming in, you'd, you'd, hear, you'd hear a guy screw in the back, and you'd go, oh! and you'd, you'd, you'd recognize the boy, and you'd be on line back, you know? <laughs> they'd get in the huddle half the time where they'd get the play in before they were yelling all over the plane, keep your eyes open, you know? And so speaking of guys that are tough time taking a walk, could call them and Jim Fence wave goodbye to Doug Plank? Yeah, that was I mean, the guy was realistic, yeah. he couldn't deal with it. And he tried to play USFL football and went nowhere fast. I mean, Doug Plank leaving for football was like uh, a boss. An alcohol getting up bourbon. Sure. I mean, it was, it was brutal on this poor guy. No matter who you are, there are very few people that can walk away from this without, when it finally hits you, uh, it, it, you just can't believe it because it's not just the end of, of a football career, it's the end of a lifetime. Did you feel a loss of self esteem? No. I feel like I'm now just, I'm now just another face in the crowd. No. I'm no longer Gary Fensick, major media star, football hero. No, I, did, I really did not feel that way. But I'll tell you, I cried my eyes out when I had to sit off that locker. And, 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 you know, the, uh, I think the children had a picture where I had my bat. I mean, I've been in this locker room for <laughs> 12 years. It took about a half hour to clean out 12 years of memories, you know, and you, I, I threw away my shoulder pads. No, no, don't do that. You keep your shoulder pads. Your kids may want them. I, mean, I, I don't want, I want the helmet. That's all I wanted. Jay Hilgenberg took my thigh pads, and uh, he said someone stole them a couple of years ago. And, that, and I signed him, good luck, and that was it. And I was two more that girl that burned with the rat, and it was a little bit more tall, and it was a, I got in the car, and I couldn't believe it was open. like to be Michael Jordan? Man, I'm a nerd. How old are you? Wouldn't you like to be? I am 24. Now I'm 29. Do you find the older you get, the more you become like your father? Why you say that? Because he and I got the same haircut. Is that something to be joking about? Do you have any advice? Just follow the front end of the shed and you're going somewhere. video series that exposes the struggle to survive through uncensored and escaping and find out why we call them animals. Lacks. I also, right? 
And McMahon do, getting 20 grand to go to some guy's party for half an hour. <laughs> and they sent a limo to pick him up and a limo to take him back. I mean, were fun days, man. Those were really fun. And it's, uh, it's a shame it, it, it had to end so quickly. Uh, it did end fast. It, it did end fast. And I, I think that uh, for us who were part of the process of not being on the good, you know, we were never an awful But to be in the 70s and, you know, 8, 8, 9, 7, wild card, next year not make the playoffs, something very special happening on offense. You had, you know, we had Peyton, you know, the greatest runner in the NFL, and, and uh, the punk QB, and just things started going. Now, you were talking earlier about who to get credit for for getting the Super Bowl. I give the Miami Dolphins a lot of credit because we had won 44 to nothing in Dallas, 36 to nothing yeah. against Atlanta. We were so full of ourselves, we went down there and got hammered. And that was a long, and, and that was a real, that, you thought about it and thought, you know what, it's wrong.
side of the tracks. He gets more than he bargained for. I sentence you to six years of hard labor. Joel McRae and Veronica Lake co-star in Preston Sturgis's directorial masterpiece, Sullivan's Travels. Premiering Saturday, November 7th at 4.30 Central, only on AMC. Guests of Chevrolet Sportsfire are transported via American Limousine, receive gifts from Bigsby and Brothers, and dine at Catch 35, setting new standards in seafood excellence. There's only one Catch 35, 35 West Wacker, Chicago. Yes, the Bears game Monday night against the Vikings is the biggest game this franchise is going to play in the 90s. If the Bears lose, they will be two full games behind Minnesota, actually two and a half if you count the fact that they've lost twice head-to-head to Minnesota. It will virtually eliminate them from contention in the NFC Central for the rest of the season, particularly when you look at the Bears' schedule. Four out of their last five games are on the road. Now, a wild card team clearly is not going to come out of the NFC Central. So, again, if the Bears lose Monday night to the Vikings, the Bears are not going to be in the playoffs. And if they're not in the playoffs, they've got to think about rebuilding. And if they think about rebuilding with free agency coming, they have to think about how they're going to do it. This is a very important football game. It's not necessarily as big as a playoff loss last year at Coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Be that as it may, it is a watershed football game for this team. The Vikings do win and gain that two game edge, wipe the playoffs off because obviously you will not have a wild card team come out of the National Football Conference Central Division. Meanwhile, I'm enraptured by the development of Jim Harbaugh. Just a couple of weeks ago, he had his ears pierced by Mike Chicka up at the Humphrey Mexico. Obviously, Jim Harbaugh let that roll right in one ear and right out the other. Harbaugh continues to impress me with his moxie, his toughness. He might not be Elwood. He might not be Marina. He might not be Kelly. He might not be Warren Moon. But I'll tell you something. In a pinch, in the foxhole, give me a guy like Jim Harbaugh. What burned me up about Dick's comments, he still burns me up with the notion that Mike Dickett would say to Jim Harbaugh. Brian, Jim Harbaugh, he is not only the most valuable player on the Chicago Bears, he's the guts of that franchise. Well, he played for, he played for Bo Schembecker. No, nothing's going nothing's gonna to bother him. I'll let you out now. Take care. All right, Ken. Brian Hewitt, I'm Chuck Gottman. This has been Chevrolet Sportsfire. Take care, and we'll catch you down the road. So long, everybody. Chevrolet Sportsfire is brought to you by your local Chicagoland Chevrolet Geo dealers. The Chicago Sun-Times, where you get sports with an attitude. And The Loop, WLUP, AM 1000.